The following is a sponsored program paid for by First Alliance Credit Union. Welcome to Good Money Moves featuring Jenna Tobble from First Alliance Credit Union and Andy Brownell. Here's Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome to Good Money Moves. I'm Andy Brownell with Jenna Tobble, AVP of Marketing at First Alliance Credit Union. Hi, Jenna. Hey, Andy. How are you? I'm great. You brought a guest today? I do. I have another guest with me this time. I have Kim Ferraro, um, our manager of, well, a lot of things these days. Real estate and mortgages is one of her big roles. So I'm going to turn it over to Kim here for a second and just let her, she's been on the show before, but it's been a while. So Kim, why don't you share with everybody what you're up to at the credit union these days? Hi. Yeah. So I'm Kim Ferraro, as Jenna said, and I am the real estate manager here at First Alliance Credit Union. So I oversee um, our traditional real estate mortgage loans like people would think about. And then also we do manufactured homes on um, unowned land, which is really fun to oversee and work with those. And then also we work with home equities and home equity lines of credit at First Alliance. Um, and we do a whole bunch of other stuff, which um, is on our website if you want to go to, too. So construction loans and land loans. So it's kind of a new journey for me with um, the real estate part. But what we're going to be talking about today, I've had um, experience over 10 years in. So I'm excited. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks, Kim, for being with us. And last week, Jenna, and we talked about the pros and cons of Renting versus owning homes. Yes. So, Jana, what is the Good Money Moves topic today? Yes. Well, as Kim alluded to, we are talking about another home-related topic. This time it is all about home equity, which we did mention a little bit in our show last week with Sherzada, but we're going to dig into that a little bit deeper today. We're going to talk about what it is, how and when you can use it to meet your goals, and talk about why homeowners need to know how to use this financial tool to meet their goals and improve their financial life. All right. Great topic. So I guess, Kim, I'll throw it at you. Start with the yeah. basics. What is home equity? Yeah. So home equity is the difference between what you may owe on a loan and the value of your house. So that in-between amount is the equity in your property. So to calculate it, you would just, like I said, take the value of your home. You can look that up on your property taxes, or if you've had a recent appraisal done, you can look at that as well. And then you would subtract that from the mortgage balance that you have or the money that you have owed on your property. And that's how you would calculate the rough estimate of that equity. Okay. So for example, if you had a home that was valued at $200,000 and your mortgage balance was $100,000, your equity would be $100,000, correct? Perfect. Yep. Yep. All right. Okay. So why is it so important to have that piece of information? Well, it's important to know because it could affect your rates on if you wanted to take a loan out against that or if you wanted to buy something else, um, that equity can be used for a down payment or if you're even refinancing your house, that's going to be important for you to know. So I guess that leads to the obvious question. As a homeowner, if I have equity, what what can... What uses are there for the home equity? Yeah, so there's a lot of different uses for it. Um, You can use that equity and take a loan out against it. And then you could use that money for home improvements. You can use it for educational expenses. Um, A lot of what we're seeing right now are debt consolidations. Um, You can use it for home Um, we talked about home improvements, but even if you're just going to add on to your house too, you could use it for that. Are there, I guess, anything I can't use it for? Is there a limiting factor? No, there's not a limiting factor on that. Um, if you're going to use it to pay off student debt, 
Um, with First Alliance Credit Union specifically, we would just say, okay, thanks for telling us that, and that's the student debt for it. But um, there's not like a specific reason that you wouldn't be able to use it for. And I think just as a point of clarification as well, for those listeners who have maybe never heard what, you know, about home equity before, Kim, you mentioned that you can kind of take out a loan against it. So, and you can correct me if I misspeak here because you're much more the expert on this than I am, but I just want to clarify what that actually means is you're using the equity that you have in your home. So the amount of the home value that you actually own as a homeowner, you can use that as kind of the security for the loan so that you're not having taking out unsecured debt like you would with like a personal loan, correct? But it's not necessarily a full on mortgage at that point. Yes, that's correct. Yep. So some people you might hear it called a second mortgage um, or a home equity loan. Correct. All right. And I guess when I brought up the limitations, I know where I got confused because in the past it was far more commonplace to use your interest on your mortgage as a deduction on your taxes. And I imagine if I wanted to do that with the second mortgage, the home equity loan, it would have to be something to do with my home in order to continue getting the deduction, not a brand new Corvette or something like that. Yes, correct. (laughs) If you want to use that um, toward your taxes, you would have to use it for improvements on your home. And then you would just want to keep all those receipts with you. Do you have any, I guess, tips for people listening on how to best use that home equity loan or use your home equity to improve your financial situation, I guess, to maximize it? Yeah, so I would say to maximize it, a lot of people I kind of alluded to a little bit ago was if you're paying credit cards that are at a high interest rate, you could use this money at a lower rate and consolidate those into one payment. And then another way that you could do it is, is say you're doing a lot of different projects around your house and you don't know exactly how much it's going to cost, or let's say you don't have an exact time frame. this would be a great loan for that because um, you could use the equity and that, that money for those purchases too, instead of taking out a lot of smaller loans toward those projects. And the, um, you mentioned the lower rate. I, I take it that these home equity loans in general carry a lower rate than an unsecured loan, as Jenna mentioned before. Yes. Yep. They do. The rates at First Alliance Credit Union, they depend on the, the value that we talked about of the house, the equity on there. So it's called a loan to value. And we base our rates on that. And it's lower than if you would just take out an unsecured loan or a credit card. But it would likely be higher than what your mortgage rate is. Depending on your mortgage rate, it could be. Yeah. If you got your mortgage, (laughs) if you got your mortgage, let's say 10 years ago, more than likely, yes. But yes, depending on that. And um, are these fixed rate loans or are they variable rate loans? Yeah. So we can kind of get into each of the types. We have a home equity loan that is a fixed. So then the rate would be fixed and the dollar amount would be fixed on what you would borrow on there. We also have a home equity line of credit. And that is a line of credit that we would use that equity from your house. So you can borrow and pay back and borrow and pay back on that. That rate is based on prime. So that's not a fixed rate, but we have a ceiling set on those. So they are still a lot lower than credit cards and unsecured loans as well. Okay. Well, well, why don't we take a break and we can come back. We can talk more about those two different types and some of the pros and cons of either one to help people understand how to make that decision. We're talking 
about home equity and home equity loans today on Good Money Moves with Kim Ferrero and Jenna Tommel from First Alliance Credit Union. Back in a moment on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good Money Moves continues in moments with Andy Brownell and Jenna Tobel from First Alliance Credit Union. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We're talking Good Money Moves with Andy Brownell and Jenna Tobel from First Alliance Credit Union on Rochester's News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back to Good Money Moves. I'm Andy Brownell. Jenna Tobel is here from First Alliance Credit Union along with Kim Ferrero, and we're talking about home equity. And before we took the break, um, Kim mentioned the two different types, the fixed rate home equity loan and then the variable rate home, which is a line of credit. I like the, the term HELOC because that's what they always refer to them, right? HELOCs? Yeah, yeah, a HELOC, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very sounds, confusing uh, term if you've never heard, if you don't know what it stands yeah. for. <laughs> yeah. So I guess maybe we could cover what are the pros and cons and how would I decide which one would be best for me? Yeah, so... I mean, we kind of talked about the pros and cons before the the HELOC, that line of credit is revolving. So you can borrow and pay back and borrow and pay back as much as you want. There's not like a set limit on that, which is really nice for a lot of people when they're not sure of how much maybe a bathroom re- remodel would be, or oh, sure. maybe they're doing la- landscaping and they're not sure on exactly the plants they want to buy or something. Those those are really nice for that. Um, a home equity fixed one is nice for people who have a lot of credit card debt and are feel stuck. So there's members that we've been helping recently that have um, a lot of credit card debt, the rates are really high, and they're just kind of stuck because they keep on paying these credit cards and and they feel like they're getting nowhere because of the interest rates. While doing this fixed one, they get one payment, the rate is low, and they can watch the balance on this actually decrease, unlike some of those credit card ones when it's revolving. So those are great, great for that. When you're deciding between the two, I would make a list of different things that you want to pay. And then also, if you have future plans for this money, think kind of a year or two out because there are a little bit of a closing cost with these. And we don't like refinancing these if we don't have to for you because we want to save you money on that. So think about if you're going to go on a trip next year, are you going to need a little bit of extra spending money for that? Or let's think about if, you know what, maybe next year I do kind of want to put on that deck on my house. We could say something about that too. So I would just think about the future when you're thinking about these home equities as well. And then also if you're just paying off credit card debt and doing that consolidation, the fixed one is a great option for for a lot of our members. Is there a a ratio that you should be considering of how large this line of credit should be or the fixed rate loan based upon how much equity you do have? Yeah, so we like to stay at around 80% if we're doing a home equity line of credit, but First Alliance does have the capacity and does have the guides to go a little bit over that if we need to. And then um, the home equity line of credit, we like to stay under the 90%. So I know some other financials won't go above the 80. And that's the nice thing about First Alliance is we're really here to help the members. And if we have to go over that 80% a little bit, we're willing to work with you and find out ways to make these work. On the fixed rate loan, obviously it has an end date because you're paying it off over a certain period of time. Will the HELOC, does the HELOC ever end or is it just open-ended? Yeah, so the HELOC, those have a 10-year revolving. Mm -hmm. And then after that 10 years, if you still have money on it, we do another 10-year payback period. So it would switch to a fixed 
and you would have another 10 years to pay that back. I see. Okay. Yep. And then for the um, home equities, the fixed ones, we do um, a five-year, a seven-year, or a 10-year, depending on how much you're borrowing and the loan of value and things like that. All right. We're going to do another break real quick here so we can come back and talk some more about home equity and home equity loans, um, ways to make them work for you to meet your financial goals and and uh, make a good money move with them. Jenna Tobble and Kim Ferrero with First Alliance Credit Union with us on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good Money Moves continues in moments with Andy Brownell and Jenna Tobble from First Alliance Credit Union. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We're talking Good Money Moves with Andy Brownell and Jenna Tobble from First Alliance Credit Union on Rochester's News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. This is Good Money Moves. I'm Andy Brownell, Jenna Tobble, and Kim Ferraro from First Alliance Credit Union with us today talking about home equity and home equity loans. And Kim identified some great uses for them, student loan debt, consolidating high interest credit card debt, home improvements. Are there, Kim, are there any situations where um, you might say that's not such a great idea to use your home equity in this to deal with whatever that situation might be? Yeah, I mean, things that you probably wouldn't want to use your home equity, and it's more of kind of a when. So if you're looking into selling your house, Sometimes it's not a great idea to take out that extra equity on there because you might not know how much your house could sell for. You have a great Mm -hmm. guide of it, right? But if you have a high loan to value already, um, we kind of suggest not to do this home equity line of credit if, if that's high because we don't want you to have to owe more on the house than than what you sell it for. Um, Another one that we see too is, again, with moving. So if people are going to be moving um, and selling it, they might have a lot of equity in there, but using it for the down payment right away isn't usually the best idea unless you have a lot of equity or you have a lot of details of the other property that you're purchasing. Um, There are a lot of other ways that we can help you with, with that moving expense too. Is there a situation that, I guess what I'm trying to get at is when you're taking out another mortgage, in essence, you're borrowing against the value of your home. And if you don't make these payments, you could put your home at risk, right? If you if you don't plan this out mm-hmm. properly. Yeah, exactly. Um, And that's something that you really want to talk to your mortgage officer about is the timeline on when you're moving and how much you're expecting on the property that you're selling on how much you're getting out of that. Um, Realtors are a good backup for when you're talking about selling prices. Um, They'll help you with that part, but kind of talking with your mortgage officer on making sure that you're getting all the payments made on the current place that you're in, because that could really affect when you're buying your new place, if you miss any payments. Mm-hmm. Is there, um, when you mentioned closing costs earlier, um, what would those costs be associated with? The closing costs for a home equity the, loan, the home equity loan. Yeah. So, Um, those are for the filing fees of the mortgage itself. And then we also do a really high level automated value system on there. So we don't do a full appraisal, which will save costs on that. Um, but it's called an AVM. So an automated value system and we'll get the, the value of your house that way. So costs are really minimal with these home equity lines of credit or even with the fixed home equity loan, which are really nice. And we try to cut costs and help members save money there too. Is there an amount of equity that you would like to see before somebody borrows against it in a home equity loan or a HELOC, no dollar amount, I guess? 
Yeah, so um, not really a dollar amount per se. I would just make sure that when a member's doing it, they're really doing it for the right reason. So for consolidation, if you're doing roughly $5,000, it might not be worth it. You might want to go up to 10000 if you can, um, just because of the closing costs and the, the different fees that you're paying. But if if it's just the $5,000, we are certainly willing to work with members if that's their need. Interesting. Okay. Kim, do you often see members taking out a home equity line of credit and then just like not using it, almost having it there as like a backup to their emergency savings? Like, so if something were to happen, they had that extra funds to pull from in case of an emergency. Is that a common use for home equity lines of credit? Yeah, that actually, Jenna, is a popular use for a lot of people, especially now when we're talking about those credit card rates, because the rates are a lot smaller and there's no annual fee on these home equity lines of credit. So the HELOC doesn't have a fee if you're not using it. And the only fee that you have is the interest on there. Mm-hmm. I know some credit cards you'll get, you'll have like an annual fee and the interest rate is like crazy 30% or something. Yeah, so yeah. this is a great alternative to some of those um, credit cards that people might have. Sure. Awesome. I, I can see this having this. If you did not have an adequate emergency fund set up yet, you could have this as a backup if yeah. you know, the furnace goes kablooey in your house or something like that and you needed to tap into some funds really quickly. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. All right. Great information, Kim. Um, do you have any final tips or advice for someone when they're looking into this option of a home equity loan? Yeah, I would say just really look at what that mortgage is and um, your estimated value of your house. You can look on um, your property tax statement that you get. Sometimes Zillow is a good reference for that, but just know that it's not always that accurate. It's just a really guide and estimate for it. And the property tax statement is usually going to come in actually less than your actual value by a little bit. Yeah, not always. Not, not always. always <laughs> correct. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sometimes a little bit. And it depends too. Like say you bought your house five years ago and you have been working slowly at adding a bedroom or doing stuff like that, your property tax statements might not show that additional bedroom or other living space that you've added as well. So those are just some things to to think about as too for that. When you're talking with somebody interested in this, and I guess depending on what they're trying to do, um, I could get that this would be really helpful in a debt consolidation, but have you do you run into a situation where somebody this could max them out, you know, they were gonna use it like I jokingly said, buy a brand new Corvette. Mm-hmm. Because now you added another payment on to what might already be a a stretch for them with their current mortgage and whatever other expenses they have. Yeah, we do run into it once in a while that there's not enough equity in the house to help them. Or maybe they just already have too many bills that they're paying and we can't find a way to help them. Um, It's hard in that situation because we understand that they're coming to us for that need. But there are some cases where we're not able to help with the home equity line of credit. And then at that point, there's a lot of other things that the lender can help the member with different options with too. All right. That's what you guys are great for is to stop in and Mm -hmm. talk with one of the advisors and find the path that works for you. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Kim, thank you so much for all the information. And Jenna, again, we've just touched Mm -hmm. the tip of the iceberg, as they say. Yeah. Maybe you could uh, fill us in on where we could find out more. Yeah, absolutely. I always encourage our listeners to visit our website at firstalliancecu.com. You can subscribe to our blog. We release new financial tips and advice there every week. You can listen to past episodes of this show at firstalliancecu.com slash podcast or on carocnews.com. You can also subscribe to Good Money Moves on Apple, Google, and Spotify podcasts. And if you love our show, please leave us a review on your favorite platform. 
And of course, if you have a financial topic or a question that you would like us to cover on Good Money Moves, you can send me an email at marketing at firstalliancecu.com. And of course, I strongly encourage you to reach out to our team at First Alliance Credit Union. They are here to help you start making good money moves today. That's First Alliance Credit Union, federally insured by NCUA and an equal housing lender. Kim, thank you again for taking time out of your day to share your knowledge with us. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was great. All right, Jenna, we will talk to you next week with another episode of Good Money Moves. You bet. All right, Jenna Tobble, Kim Ferraro, First Alliance Credit Union. This is Good Money Moves on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM.